Hello friends, this video on S block elements part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's see the trend in the metallic characters with the alkali metal. The general trend we have seen the metallic character increases as we go down the group. Similarly, here also the metallic character has to increase. Correct? Why? Because the increase in size, the increase in size, metallic character is what? The tendency to lose electron, right? Tendency to lose electron. That is my metallic character. So if you go down the group, since the electrons here are less controlled by uh, nucleus, they have more tendency to lose electron. This guy will have little less tendency. This guy will have little less, less tendency. Right? So the tendency to lose electron is increasing, so the metallic character will also increase. Right? And all the alkali metals are generally soft. They can be cut with knife. This is the property they are very very soft actually they are very soft they can easily be cut with knife and they have luster they shine if you have remember the picture of uh, lithium sodium potassium which i have shown in the first few slides it has shine but it, it easily loses shine when exposed to air so it is generally dipped in the kerosene or something so let's talk about the photoelectric effect for alkali metal so what is photoelectric effect? So you must have seen that the concept behind photoelectric effect is you have a metal, you put some sun rays here, right? Sun rays here, or any ray photon, the photons have energy. That energy is if that energy is sufficient to pull out electrons from the atom, right? Then you see a photoelectric effect. So here of also if you see the alkali metals has very low first ionization energy. First reason why? Because these alkali metals, they have one extra electron in the outermost shells and they easily want to lose electron to become stable, right? So they have very first, low first ionization energy. So, and if you see, this is the trend of the size. Now, since it has low ionization energy, it can easily lose electron on exposure to any light. So, the moment you put light or the any, any light, the energy of the photon is sufficient to eject electron. So, you write here, energy of photon can eject valence electron. And this is the reason why we have photoelectric effect in the case of alkali metal. But for lithium, it doesn't have a photoelectric effect because it has very high ionization energy. It needs more energy to pluck one electron from lithium. And we told why because the size is small and this lithium, this, the outermost electron is totally controlled by lithium nucleus, right? So it's difficult to pluck electron. But if you see in this case, the energy required is very less. You can easily give an electron. So even a small light falls into this, it can easily give, give electron. Right. Similarly, here also cesium, small energy, in fact, 376 kilojoule of energy uh, is uh, sufficient to pluck electrons from one mole of uh, cesium atoms. Correct. So, this is the whole reason why we had the photoelectric effect. The reason was the low first ionization energy because the ionization energy is low. Even the energy of the photon is sufficient to eject the valence electrons. So, most of the elements in alkali our group has a photoelectric effect except lithium because it has higher energy energy size is small but if you go down the group the size increases and the energy the energy required to pluck electron decreases so they all show photoelectric effect except lithium. let's discuss alkali metal flame color test what is flame color test and why some alkali metals in fact most of the alkali metals give flames to uh, when they heated in Bunsen burner so as I told that, the moment you pass uh, heat or the light to an electron, to an atom, the electron jumps, right? The electron jumps. Now, when this electron comes back to the same shell, it radiates light of different color. And that's why you get different colors when you heat these metals in flame, right? Because when the electron, for example, sodium, then back it uh, gives light of some X color for potassium and some Y color. And that's why this is the reason, um, this is one of the good tests to determine metals using the flame test. So what is flame test? So in a Bunsen burner, if you have this metal here, you just burn it, it gives different flame. For example, lithium gives crimson red. For example, lithium is lithium. So lithium will give you crimson red color for Sodium, it is yellow color. For sodium, this is my yellow color. Right? Or let me write sodium here. This is my sodium. Sodium gives a yellow color test. 
Potassium gives a violet color. So this is my potassium. Right? You be giving him red violet color. This is, the red, this is the kind of color it will get. My cesium gives blue color. And this frankium gives yellowish color. So this is the color of the uh, metals in the flame test. Uh, is the color of the flames in the flame test. And there are different metals used in the same uh, Bunsen burner flame, if you see. And there are different colors it gets. So these properties used also to determine metals. For example, if a metal gives yellow color, you can tell that this guy is sodium. A little orange color, you can say it's frankium. A little crimson red color, you can say it's lithium. Correct? So this is one of the tests to determine metal also in the labs. And the reason why it gets is the moment you heat this electron jumps and when it comes back, it, it emits light of a certain wavelength, right? And if you see the wavelengths are all different. And the wavelength determine the color of the light. Next thing we'll discuss is the density in the alkali metal blends. So density, if you see of these metals are less, if you see the lithium density is less, it's increasing, right? Increase. So the density is increasing. But what is density? Density is nothing but mass by volume. So with these, if you see, the mass is increasing. The lithium mass, if you see, is 3. Then it is 11, 19. I'm talking about the atomic number. If you think about the atomic mass, is double of that, right? 6, 22, 38. The atomic mass is increasing. What about the volume? Volume is what? For a given uh, uh, atom, volume will be 4 by 3 pi r cube, right? Because it's the spherical shape. And radius is increasing, if you see. If we go down the group, both my mass and volume both increase and they increase in such a way that the ratio is also increasing. It may happen that in some case the both mass and volume may increase but the ratio may decrease. But in this case both mass and volume is increasing and the ratio is also increasing. This is based on data. This, this is something which we can't just tell by the fact that both mass and volume increase, so the mass and volume ratio has to increase. This may not be true always, right? Because we can have scenarios where the both, uh, for example, my volume and uh, mass increase, but the ratio is not increasing, it may decrease also. But in this case, based on the data we have got using experiments, the mass volume both increase, also the ratio of mass and volume also increase as you go down the group. Since the ratio of mass and volume increase, that is nothing but the density also, increase as we go down the let's talk about the melting and boiling point have you ever wondered the melting and boiling point depends on what so if you see the melting and boiling point depends a lot on the crystal lattice in it right so if if i have my all these ions and it forms crystals and it releases energy actually why because this part on the left hand side is unstable this part is stable we have discussed this right because this is the bigger picture of this. If you form a lattice kind of structure, it is more ordered, so it is stable. So this, this part is unstable, it is in the liquid, a gaseous form, this part is stable, right? It becomes crystals or a solid. Now, there is energy released. Same thing, if you want to make it um, from solid to gaseous, you have to heat it up. It gives some energy to bring it to unstable state, correct? And this is generally my uh, liquid or gas state and this is my solids now the energy that is released in formation of this is more if you have small crystals that means small crystals more stable solid if you have big big crystals you won't be able to make uh, stable crystals right so small atom means better crystals you make better or stable Stable crystals. Hope you understand this. If you understand this, you'll understand this melting and boiling point. So if this atom size is small, the crystals which you get, the crystal structure you get is better and is more stable, right? If it is more stable, then to break it, you need more energy, right? If, it, if, some, if somebody is more stable, to break it, you need more energy. If somebody is less stable, to break it, you need less energy. For example, Na is less stable. It has one extra electron. You, you need less energy to make it Na+, plus, right, because this is more stable. So similarly, anything which is more stable will need more energy to get destabilized. So 
more stable means what small atom that means small atoms means more stable that means more energy correct so let me write here small atom implies more stable crystal right implies more melting in boiling point hope you understand this why see small atom implies more uh, stable crystal with more stable crystal that needs it needs more heat to melt or boil so small atom implies more melting and boiling point hope if you understand this concept you'll understand the trend hope you understand the concept let's repeat once again small atoms means stable crystal that means it's more stable if the crystal is stable it need more energy to melt it so that means more melting and boiling point is required more heat is required to melt it so that means small atom means more melting and boiling point so if you see the trend here the size of the atom increase so the melting and boiling point will decrease so if you see the melting and boiling point of lithium was 454 it decreased it decreased it decreased all the more if you go down the group it decreases similarly if you talk about the boiling point also it decreases correct so if you see that and alkali metal generally have low melting and boiling point why because because generally if you compare alkali metal with other metal for example alkali metal they have bigger radius right you can see the radius increase in span so bigger radius if we are moving in this path right so for example alkali metals have bigger radius than alkaline metal so they have bigger radius so they generally have bigger radius means low melting and boiling point generally but if you see a particular alkali metal group if you go down the group it will decrease why because the atomic radius will increase so the melting and boiling point will decrease correct and the same thing which we explained the low melting and boiling point nothing but due to large atomic size So this is the concept behind the melting and boiling. So let's talk about the softness of the metal. See, softness of the metal is because of two factors. One is the weak metallic bond because there's a bond which uh, ties this uh, atoms. That is weak; it will become soft, and large size of atom. So if you see generally the <coughs> alkali metals they have larger atomic radius compared to other metals. This is alkali, this is alkaline, this is halogens. So they have larger atomic radius, so they are generally soft, right? Large atomic radius implies softness. Correct. So they are generally soft. But if you see in the same uh, group, if you talk about the same group, so if we go down the group, the softness increase. Why? You go down the group, the size increase. right so i told that size is inversely proportional to softness size increase sorry directly proportional to softness size will increase the softness is also increase do you go down the group the softness also increase thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again